Hey, I'm Gretchen Bridgers of the Always a Lessons Empowering Educators podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to a mini episode of the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. Many episodes just like this one are released every other Wednesday and feature interviews with educators that were recorded live on location at a conference or event. Please subscribe to the show to make sure that you don't miss any of these episodes. And now, here's the host of the Educational Duct Tape Podcast, Jake Miller. Duct Tapers, welcome in. Before we get into today's mini episode interview, I'd like to remind you to listen to full episodes of the podcast to hear longer interviews with my guests, my soapbox moments, and content from listeners just like you, the Duct Tapers. Also, those longer episodes give you the chance to earn a certificate of listening, laughing, and learning that you could turn in for professional development credits. Many episodes like this one that you're listening to right now, however, are not eligible for those credits simply because they're so short. However, what they lack in certificates and episodes link they make up for in awesomeness. <laughs> Speaking of that awesomeness, let's travel back in time to today's interview, which was recorded live and on location at a conference or event. Today's guest. Okay, so I'm here today with Dan Stitzel, and, and Dan, we're, we're doing a mini episode together with Dan because Dan works with Missy Payton, who was in a recent mi- min, uh, a recent Missy episode, a recent mini episode, and I was like, hey, while we're hooked up, while the c- computers are connected via the interwebs, let's just do two, because I wanted to have Dan on the show anyhow, so, so I, we're connected today with Dan Stitzel for a mini episode, so Dan, why don't you give everybody a lowdown on who you are, where you're at, what you do, all that good stuff. All right, sounds great. Well, thanks for having me, Jake. Um, yeah. And I, so I work in Streets Row City Schools. I've been there for 11 years now, or I've been here for 11 years. Um, mm-hmm. For the first 10 years, I was a language arts teacher. So middle school language arts. Um, I also taught some social studies. Um, and then actually last year, I was teaching language arts half a day. And I started um, doing our, one of our district technology coaches the other half of the day. Okay. Um, and then this, this current school year, um, I transitioned from that teaching role um, slash coaching role to just being a tech coach all day. So I am working in the entire district. So I'm tech coaching uh, K through 12. So it's pretty common that it, even today, you know, I'm working with a 12th grade class and a first grade class. So it's pretty common that I am kind of all across the district, just, you know, doing different types of technology integration with the teachers. Yeah. So when you when you switch from going with a 12, uh, like a 12th grade class to a first grade class, do you have to like play like baby shark on your on your Air- airpods to like get you like to change your mindset over do you have any like strategies for doing that <laughs> i do i do I, I listen to baby shark on the way as i'm walking from building to building so and, and then i when i get there i do some go noodle to kind of get myself you know i'll, I'll it, it, like the kindergartners or like the first graders you know do some counting and abcs so right it's fun though <laughs> it's it, it's it's really fun especially because you know i taught just in the middle school setting for so long. Mm -hmm. And so with this position, it's really neat to like actually get to be in the classrooms of these kids at all these different levels. And it's, it's really cool. It's a really neat, really neat job. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It it would be, it would be fun if you really did have certain strategies you do to get you in the right mindset for the different grade levels you're working with. Like, so you'd you'd listen to some baby shark to go work with little, the littles. And then like when you're going to the middle school, you'd like spray some Axe body spray on yourself. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. And then when you're going up to the high school, you would like post on Snapchat real quick before you went in there. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, I actually do carry a bottle of Axe in my bag just, you know, for the times that I'm walking over to the middle school. So, so actually, it's amazing that you knew my strategy. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> all, all other uh, tech coaches out there that work K to 12 are vigorously scribbling down these notes on how they can get themselves in the right mindsets for the different grades. Hey, it's, it's important to get into that mindset. You know, it's really important. <laughs> Thanks for those tips, Dan. Well, that does it for our mini episode with Dan Stitzel. Tips on how to work with different (laughs) grades. And you are all welcome. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Nice. No, we're actually going to do some educational duct tape today, Dan. (laughs) Not just about Axe Body Spray. I have a question for you. (laughs) 
for those people out there that this might be their first time listening, they're like, oh my gosh, Dan Stitzel's on the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. I've got to listen for his Axe Body Spray tips. Yeah. I've got to tell you. <laughs> I got to tell you what educational duct tape is. It's my uh, silly metaphor, almost as silly as the Axe body spray thing, but not quite. Uh, my silly metaphor that educational technology is at its best when we're using it as a tool to solve problems, meet goals, or address learning standards, not when it is the focus of our lesson or activity, but when it is a tool helping us do something that pedagogically makes sense with our students, that helps us achieve whatever we're trying to achieve with our students. So as a former uh, language arts teacher and as a current tech coach, I was wondering how you might use technology to kind of enhance the teacher to student feedback process, especially with, with writing. So one of my favorite tools is using Screencastify. Okay. Um, I traditionally, you know, when I started teaching, I would print out my students' essays or their writing samples, and I would, you know, get my different color pens out, and I would circle things and underline things, and I'd make all these comments. And by the time I would hand their paper back to them, it was like a tie-dyed, you know, narrative <laughs> or a tie-dyed, you know, personal. There, it, it was really hard for the students to even see what I was trying to, you know, help them with. Right. Um, so then with like the integration of Google Docs, I started to do that, you know, just on the computer using, you know, uh, underlining and highlighting and adding comments in the margin. Uh, but then last year or two years ago, I started to think about it and I was like, so I actually asked my students and I asked them, I'm like, how many of you truthfully, I was like, I'm not going to be mad. I was like, we'll do it in just a, an anonymous Google form. I'm like, how many of you truthfully go through and look at all that, you know, feedback that all those comments I put on the side and the things right. that I highlight, um, and there were some students that I, you know, that they did, but a lot of the students were like, it's just kind of overwhelming. Um, it's, it's a lot to look at. And so I started to kind of reevaluate. I'm like, what can I do that's not so intimidating? Um, and so that's when I got the idea to just do some screen recording, some screencasting. Mm -hmm. So what I would actually do is I would, they would turn their, um, their writing samples in through Google Classroom. And I would just open that, that doc up right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would start recording. So, um, I would record, actually, generally, I would read it one time first. So I'd read that writing sample first, so I had an idea. Um, so, you know, kind of that first read to know what mm -hmm. it's about, to, to kind of pick up on those patterns. But then that second time, what I would do is I'd, I'd press record on Screencastify. And as I was going through, and I was highlighting those things that I would normally highlight anyways, I could actually explain why I was highlighting it um, without having to type that comment as well. So um, if I noticed that students were um, not you know, capitalizing proper nouns. Mm -hmm. I could highlight a couple and say, hey, I just want to point out um, that, you know, I noticed just in these first two paragraphs alone that we're having a little bit of an issue with, you know, capitalizing the first letter of these proper nouns. So that's something that you can see here that now you can look at the rest of the paragraphs and see if you can pick up on that. Yeah. Um, it was also a really good time for me um, just to talk to them. You know, it's hard to really give that like almost one-on-one -on -one feedback through those those typed comments and so sometimes i would just stop you know the highlighting or stop the the um you know editing and i would just talk about their personal narratives or, or about that experience they went through um and kind of you know it, it almost opened up that one-on-one -on -one style like me sitting next to them right um, and one thing that i i did always do which some students were kind of like weirded out at first, but I did always have my little screen in the corner. So when they were, um, cause you can have in screencastify, you can turn it on so that your webcam right. is on. So I'm in, you know, I'm in the corner. Um, so as I'm going through and I'm talking to them about their writing, they see me talking to them. So again, it kind of, um, made that, you know, one-on-one -on -one, us sitting down, us right. conferencing that, that feel, um, rather than just sitting there reading about it or them just seeing all the comments and not even wanting to read them because it was so intimidating. Yeah. Right. Um, I, th I think ha not only the connection to like, that's, that's my teacher's face right there, but also being able to understand the, t the tone, like you hear it in their voice, you see it in their face, like the teacher's not actually mad at them. You know, the teacher's yeah. trying to support them and they could tell, whereas with the red pen, they might not be able to tell, but with seeing your voice, they, they understand, they're seeing your face and hearing your voice, they can understand kind of the tone of everything and, and see it more from an empathetic point of view than a, a correcting them point of view. So I think it's good that you put, you know, not only are you, are you connecting your voice into it, but your face is there too, to, to make it more comfortable and to have kind of like, like you're saying it, it does feel more one-to-one -one when you do that. And obviously actually doing this one-to-one -one, sitting down across from each other next to each other at a desk would be the ideal 
but you probably just didn't have the time to do that, you know, so this made it made that this is the best substitute out there, I think. Yeah. And a lot of times I would find myself like recording this this feedback on the weekends or in the evenings, knowing that like we were still going to have time in class afterwards to sit down one on one. Mm Um, so it wasn't always the end product I was going through. Mm-hmm. It was those products that as they were in the writing process, mm-hmm. um, the real, like the time for them really to make those revisions as they're going so that it wasn't, you know, Hey, at the very end, they feel like they've turned in their final copy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they look and they see, you know, that there's all these revisions they need to do. So I would still do my best, like you said, to sit down one-on-one. Cause that is obviously the ideal situation is to sit right. there with your student and really write, you know, have that conferencing moment. Um, but this was kind of that quick feedback and it sounds like a lot of work. It really does. But honestly, it was maybe, you know, five to 10 minutes per paper um, of just, you know, after I read it once and I, I knew what I was going to talk about um, because a lot of times that feedback part, the, the part that takes the most time is the typing or the actual physical writing. So when you're just explaining it, um, it actually saves you a lot of time. And then the students really liked it because they would pause like as they're watching the video, they would just pause it. They'd fix that, you know, whatever it might be, right. or they would, you know, add to, and then they would press play and they'd kind of go back. So um, it was actually funny. I had a parent who I had not met yet. Um, she wasn't able to come to like open house or parent teacher conferences. And I saw her at like a sporting event and she was like, are you Mr. Stitzel? And I was like, yeah, I am. You know, we started talking. She's like, I recognized you because I was watching you on a video on, of my son's writing. And I was like, and, and I was like, oh, that's so nice to meet you. But like inside, I was like, yes, because that actually was kind of that like gratification, that right. justification. That they are actually watching these videos. Uh, right. They are actually hopefully taking the time then to go back, you know, and make those revisions. So it was kind of funny that we met, you know, as I'm talking to her son about his personal narrative or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. But, um, but you know, I, I feel like the students are just so a lot of times, you know, they are drawn to things they're comfortable to. And a lot of students are comfortable sitting and watching videos. Now, I mean, it's kind right. of what, a pastime of a lot of kids. And so right. um, that quick video of what they could do, and then they go back, they fix it, they resubmit it or whatever it might be. was, was a really valuable thing. Yeah. I, th- I think there's a lot of reasons that it would work. N- number one is it, it gives you the ability to have, do more one-on-one conferencing with the kids than uh, I'm using air quotes right now, one-on-one conferencing with the kids than you normally could do. Like you're saying, like I still did it one-on-one face-to-face at the end, but now I could do it throughout. So that, that obviously yeah. is one huge win for it. Another is like, like we said, they could sense your tone when you're giving them those corrections. Oh, absolutely. A- another is, is that actual like the kind of like rapport, empathy kind of connection of, of it being their teacher and them see, seeing you there. Uh, but another is that they, I, I think a kid, whether they are conscious of it or not, they have to understand that you're putting forth an effort uh, when you're doing it this way that you didn't have to do and that other teachers don't do. And they have to realize that you're putting in more work than than you would be if you were just writing comments or, or handwriting on the paper. Like you're actually doing something extra for them and the, and the kids probably feel that. Yeah, they do. It, it was funny because I actually had a student, a couple of students, they came up to me. It was during the writing process and they, they asked me like, hey, when are you going to do like when, you, when are we going to get our next like video you know, feedback? Like right. they were actually asking for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it does. It goes back to everything you were saying. It's kind of with that video feedback, it helps them then with the revision because they know the tone. They know what I'm, you know, it's, it's more of that, that personal, you know, us having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I didn't just use this for writing. I mean, writing was what I primarily used it for. Um, but I would do it for like assessments and things too. If, if, you know, I would open up a Google form, if I did like some type of quick assessment on a form. And if I noticed that there were like, let's say we were having an assessment, um, a grammar assessment, and I noticed that students were, confusing independent and dependent clauses, something mm-hmm. we always would go over. I turn on Screencastify and I would pull up our slideshow that I used in class and I'd go back through it and talking, you know, and, and then I'd send that video to those students. Or if it was something that um, I know all the students could benefit from, I would just put it on our Google Classroom. You know, I just like if it was something that I knew that, you know, maybe a couple of the students were having a difficulty with, mm-hmm. there were probably more students you know, than just the, those two or three. And so I'd put it on classroom and just say, Hey, if you need a little extra, you know, refresher on the right. difference of an independent dependent clause, here's a quick video, just going back over our slides. So, right. And then I in your videos that you're recording individually, you could say, Hey, you know, go watch this other video too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So right. um, if it was, you know, something that was 
obviously personal towards one of the students or it was about their writing that was personal narrative. So it was, you know, I wouldn't put it on Google Classroom. Right. I would just send that right via link right to them. But if it was something that every kid could benefit from, that was a pretty general yeah. you know, lesson or refresher. Um, yeah, I would say, hey, watch this. And if you still need help, go back and watch this or whatever it might be. Yeah. So how did you send these to the kids? Did you send them? Was it a comment in the doc or was it an email or was it a Google Drive share or was it a private message in classroom or did it vary? How did you do that? A couple different ways. So um, primarily it was through classroom as a private message. So mm-hmm. when I would return, if it was the final product, when I would when I would you know, return that um, writing piece back to the student, I would leave it as a comment, just the mm-hmm. link there. They click on the link. But yeah, if it was something that was for all the students, I would just post it right to our, our Google Classroom, um, to the feed there. Mm-hmm. Um, or sometimes I would just email them. Like if there were certain students I knew that were having difficulties with a, you know, whatever it might be, I would just email those students. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the writing, I did most of it through Google Classroom just to mm-hmm. make sure that it was staying with just that one student, that yeah. it wouldn't accidentally get, you know, mixed in so that other students were seeing that person's, you know, individual feedback. Yeah. And that's probably a nice way to kind of document that you did that too. Like, like we don't, often think about the fact that we have to be kind of documenting our interactions with kids, but it's a nice way to document that, that effort you put in that feedback you gave them so that it's there and, and warehoused somewhere to, so to speak. Yeah. And it was easy to go back to if they, for some reason couldn't, you know, if they were like, I just am having a hard time finding where you, where that comment is or where that right. link is. It was easy on my end to go back and find it and resend right. it or show them how to, you know, to access that link. So yeah. um, it, it worked out really well. Yeah. One, one thing that struck me as, as you were talking about it, and this is, I, I've talked before and I've recommended to, to language arts teachers before to do this strategy you're talking about here. And I use some of the reasons we were talking about, but one thing that never really dawned on me until uh, you were talking about like your tie dyed papers covered with ink is that when, when you hand back a paper either digitally with a bunch of Google Docs comments on it or physically on a paper with a bunch of handwritten comments on it, you see a lot of stuff at once, a lot of feedback at once, and it's overwhelming to digest all of it. And like you said, the kids are not likely then to read it because they're seeing so much at one thing. But when you're doing it as a video, they're getting each piece of the feedback one at a time. They don't have to digest it all simultaneously. Yeah. And and what's nice is like, as I'm, you know, as they're listening to the video or watching the video, I'm actually scrolling in their paper. So the comment that I am making Mm -hmm. pertains to that moment in the writing where I am on my screen, you know, so there's like you were saying, there's no other distractions on the side. Mm -hmm. Now, there might be some things that might may have been highlighted, you know, elsewhere, like from previous comments or what Mm -hmm. it might be. But um, for the most part, they're focused more on that section that we're actually talking about. Um, so it's less distracting and, and yeah. like, yeah, they're, they're a little more inclined to actually, you know, listen to it, watch it. And I did my best always in mean, some, some writing assignments were longer than others, but I tried my best to always keep these less than five minutes because I didn't want to lose their attention. Right. Um, if there was, and, and I wanted it to be five minutes of what they really needed. Um, if I know myself and if I was saying, Hey, you can have 10 minutes, I would sit there and I would talk for 10 minutes, but I know for their benefit, they want to know what they can do and they don't want to sit there and listen to their teacher, you know, and watch their teacher in the corner of their screen for for that much longer. So Yeah, it it probably made force you to prioritize your your feedback on the things that the kids need to fix right away. Like you're not trying to get them to be JK Rowling on their very first, you know, very first draft, you know, you're you're trying to fix whatever is the top of the line thing for them to fix. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. and that that forced you to to, to do that. Um, now on that note, you know, you mentioned the five minutes there. Uh, so Screencastify has changed their their free plans, and five minutes now is the limit on on a video for a free plan. But the the nice thing for what you're talking about there is, even though it's kind of a bummer for the limit to be five minutes, but it is a nice kind of it forces you to be brief and concise. Yeah. But the other nice thing is now they've increased the limit on the free plan to unlimited number of videos. And if you you really were doing what you're doing regularly in the classroom, you might need more than 50 videos a month, which used to be the limit. Like if you're giving each kid feedback at some point in the month and you're a high school or middle school teacher, like you're easily going to do more than 50 videos. Yeah, I was definitely paying for the premium uh, or the, the paid version because when two years ago when I started this, I had over 100 students and so if I made, you know, one right. video per student, which that's what I was doing, right. um, you know, I was well over the 50 or well over, you know, what they, they gave you at the time. Right. Um, and then last year um, I did with teaching half day, mm-hmm. I had about 50 students, but still, I mean, 
if I'm making, you know, I, I tried to give them feedback throughout the writing process. Right. So there were some students that were getting three or four videos right. per, you know, writing piece. And that adds up really quickly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's nice. So so for for listeners that might not be familiar with the, the change the screencast device, the free plan now limits you to five minutes per video, but you get unlimited videos. They've incre- improved like the, the editor experience and the after video experience. And one thing that I know, Dan, you and I are both kind of geeking out about is that now the ability to create GIFs from your screencasts is uh, free with Screencastify. And it's so easy. It's just like... One button. Yeah. And Dan, do, do you create gri- GIFs with Screencastify or do you create GIFs with Screencastify? Jake, I definitely create GIFs with Screencastify. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. No, no, no. No GIFs. No uh, GIFs. Uh, GIFs. Uh, I you, don't, you know what, Dan? That, that frustrates me. That frustrates me to hear that. Hear that. But, but I'm not going to hold it against you because I, I, I love what you shared in, in, today because you talked about how you went from – you identified a teacher problem, right, which was the kids weren't reading all of the handwritten um, feedback you were giving them. And you used some some actual like student feedback, some like you listened to the students to identify that was the case. And then you tried out a technology thing, which was typing comments. And then you kind of assessed that and realized they still weren't really reading it. And then you used a different technology tool to address the same problem. That you, you're still trying to work your way through this problem and found something that, although probably not perfect, is is the best the best solution you could you could get to i i think it's the best solution you can get to and you you literally went through what i consider to be the educational duct tape way of approaching this situation absolutely yeah one other thing i want to want to point out is that uh, some teachers might be listening to this and think like i don't have time like i have 120 high school language arts students i don't have time to record a video for all of them even if a written piece of work takes like two weeks from start to finish I don't have time to do, you know, 10 a day to get all 120 done during the two week process. You don't have to do it for all 120 students on every project. You need to do it where it's going to benefit the most. Like if you do it for 60 students on this project and you do it for 60, the 60 other students on the next project, maybe like you're, you're still doing something that's beneficial to the kids, whether it's getting to each kid or not, you know, do, you know, you kind of do what you can, right? Yeah. And you don't have to do this for every assignment either. You know, there are some writing assignments that are just, that are more beneficial just to make a quick comment, you know, in a doc or highlight a couple of things. So this isn't something that completely replaced that. This was just something that I found um, for certain writing pieces was more beneficial because it really helped the students. And then it was, you know, for me, it helped me kind of create that relationship as I'm reading and kind of give them that information. So again, you don't, I, I did not do this for every assignment they ever turned in. Mm -hmm. But this was something that I found super beneficial, um, especially for like narratives and those longer pieces, because a lot of, you know, what I found is if there's something that they're doing in the the first couple paragraphs of a writing piece, it's probably going to continue on. So I was able just to kind of talk about it in those first couple paragraphs, as far as, you know, what that, that issue was. And then the rest of the time I could just talk about the actual writing and, and what I was getting out of it and, and the feelings I was getting, the mood and the tone. So um, it's, it's a really, really cool tool. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you for sharing about this, Dan. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. Please visit eduducttape.com to join the discussion, share possible topics, inquire about being a guest, or contact Jake. And remember, duct is spelled with a T, not a quack quack K. Missy Payton. Missy Payton. Hello, Missy Payton. <laughs> Stop recording. Oh. Myself calling you Missy Payton. Hi, Missy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you went from being Sandra to being Missy. Right? What's Came next? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you many, never get to be the many faces. Stand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah.